Kelly from Soy and Shea and thank you for joining me. Now I love a coffee scrub. I love how they smell. I love how they feel. I love the benefits that you get from using coffee as an exfoliant, but I hate the mess that they leave behind in the shower. So when it was time to add a coffee scrub into our range of products, I knew I wanted it to be a nice gentle exfoliator. I wanted it to be really nice and moisturizing and I didn't want it to be messy. So I came up with our coffee buff bars. They're basically a solid block of butters that are filled with exfoliants. And as you use them in the shower and you're scrubbing away, um, the, the warmth of your body and the warmth of the water will melt the butters down, leaving them on the skin, making you feel nice and moisturized like you've used a body butter. So they're a really great two for one sort of product. So today I'm going to share with you how I make my coffee buff bars. And if you're a creator yourself, why not check out the description box down below where I've left what I call my starting point recipe. Now I create a starting point recipe for every new product that I create within my range. And from my starting point recipe, I can usually make two or three different but similar products from it. So to do these starting point recipes, I basically have a look at recipes from trusted websites such as Soap Queen, Aussie Soap Supplies, New Directions, Nature's Garden, places like that. Usually suppliers of raw bath and body ingredients because they're usually tried and tested recipes that will work and do follow guidelines such as preservatives and fragrancing. From here I then break down several of the recipes into ingredient categories such as humectants, surfactants, hard oil, soft oils and then I have a look at a rough range percentage that I need of each of those categories. So for example when I was looking at how to make this solid body butter bar to be used in the shower I noticed that most of them use between 55 and 70 percent of hard butters. So I put down that you need 60% of hard butters and then this could be any combination that you like. So you could choose to use just one hard butter if that's what you want to do. You could use two, three, four, you could go all out and use five or six different butters as long as the total weight of it comes to 60% of your recipe. The same with the exfoliants, you can use whatever you like as long as it comes to that total 33%. And then you can also start tweaking it from there, depending upon your sort of the climate that you live in, whether you want it more um, exfoliating, less exfoliating and things like that. So you're welcome to use my starting point recipe down below to create yourself your own little moisturizing bar that you can use in the shower. And if you do decide to have a go at using the recipe, please let me know. Either hashtag me through Instagram, message me through Facebook, or even send me a message through my website at soyandshea.com.au. I'd love to see what you actually come up with from that starting point recipe. So let's go and have a look at how I make my coffee buff bars. So we're going to start out by weighing our hard oils and butters. Now I've just chosen to use butters in mine and I'm using cocoa and shea butter because these two butters for me stay solid all year round whereas something like coconut oil which is considered to be hard does melt down in summer so I didn't want to run into issues with this recipe in the summer months. But you could use anything from cocoa, shea, mango, kokum, any sort of butter that you like at all. And I worked out I needed about 60% combined of hard oils or butters. Now I'm using this cocoa butter from Heirloom Bath and Body. It is the most amazing cocoa butter I have come across. I've always heard people say how their cocoa butter smells of chocolate. And with my original supplier of this, I never got that sort of chocolate smell until I started ordering from Heirloom Bath and Body and it is an amazing scent. So I chose to use this cocoa butter for its scent as well as its other properties because the smell of it actually does come through in this lotion bar um, with all the other ingredients as well. But if you've only got deodor if you do use cocoa butter and you've only got deodorized butter, that's fine as well. So we've got that in there. I'm also going to add in some beeswax and this is um, to make it firmer as well. Um, the beeswax will help with the firm firmness. I'm only using 4% beeswax so if you go too high with beeswax it can get a little bit um, draggy on the skin a little bit pulley whereas at this 4% I find it makes the bars nice and hard for um, packaging wise 
but it doesn't pull on the skin when you're using it and it also does kind of help it's not a solubizer like poly 80 or poly 20 but it does help to keep those oils contained and not make the shower too slippery when you're using them so what I'm going to do now before I add in my shea butter I'm going to start melting these down because I don't want my shea butter to go grainy on me so I'm going to go pop this on the stove and let it gently melt down Okay, so while the cocoa butter and beeswax is melting down, I'm going to get the exfoliants ready. The recipe is about 33% of exfoliants, and they can be anything you like. So anything from rosehip seeds um, to apricot kernel, walnut shell, you could use ground up orange um, pieces, anything that you like. Now, the original recipe I saw did call for azuki beans, which I then found out is actually a copy of someone else's recipe, but I couldn't understand what the purpose of adzuki beans were other than as an exfoliant like there were no other sort of benefits that I could see so I actually did a bit of a play with and without I got these black beans or turtle beans out of like the lentil sort of area of your supermarket and when I tried it without I found that the scrub was a lot harsher but by putting these beans in it kind of rounded out the feel of the coffee in the scrub so I am going to continue putting these black beans in now the next thing I'm going to add into my mixer here and this is a cup of a Nutri Ninja you could use a coffee grounder you could use a Thermomix if you're lucky to have one you could use a Nutribullet anything that you like I'm just using my Nutri Ninja because I find that it grounds things down really well I'm also going to add my coffee in here because even though I buy it as a ground coffee it can sometimes be still that little bit too um, granular for my scrub so I'm just going to add the coffee in here as well I also find that by putting the coffee in it helps to grind those beans up a little bit better it's not so roughly chopped so I'll get my coffee in here And we've got lots of coffee because this is after all a coffee buff bar and what I'm now going to do is just go and pop that onto the Nutri Ninja and get that ground down okay so that is it now all nicely ground down and I'm going to add into this container my almond meal now if you do have nut allergies make sure that you are using something other than almond meal and if you are selling this um, either put your no allergens on there or um, substitute it. I really liked the texture of the ground almond meal in this um, in this bar so I'm going to weigh this out so I've got okay so we've got our almond meal now all weighed out and I'm just waiting for that cocoa butter and beeswax to finish melting Okay, so this is all now melted down and is starting to really cool down. It's taking on a bit more of a cloudy sort of appearance. What I'm going to do just to make the next sort of steps a little bit easier is I'm going to pour these melted um, butters and beeswax into my measuring jug here. And give this a really good scrape out so we can make sure we've got everything out of here. Now the reason I'm not leaving it in the saucepan is a because it's a little bit harder for me to pour out into my mold but also by transferring it out of the warm pan and into a cool jug it does make the next sort of step a little bit quicker okay so the next thing I'm going to do is measure out my fragrance I'm using a mix of fragrance oil and essential oil on my recipe here I'm using 2% but um, depending upon what fragrance and essential oils or what you choose to put into yours make sure you are reading the guidelines upon how much of each you can safely use so in mine I'm actually using a mix of a fragrance oil which has coffee coconut a little bit of chocolate some um, what else is in there a bit of vanilla as well and I'm also adding in some sweet orange essential oil the reason behind me putting in the orange oil, I was once told by somebody way before I started making things that whenever you get that sort of coffee ground sort of smell on you, the sweet orange essential oil is one of those things that you can add which helps to mask that coffee smell. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take that measurement. All right, so this is well, it's still a little bit warm. It's 43 to 44 degrees. So what I'm going to do is add in my fragrance oil. That should drop that temperature a little bit more for me. And while that's dropping, I'm going to add in my preservative. Now, in my recipe, I'm using 1% and I'm using Nipigard SCE. I have spoken about um, preservatives in another video and why I choose to use Nipigard. You can use whichever preservative that you wish to use. Just make sure that you are reading your guidelines upon how much that you need to use what your maximum and minimum amounts are and stick within those guidelines. Also find out a little bit about their heat qualities. So with the nipper guard, you can add it in anywhere between 30 and 40 degrees. You need the warmth to activate the, um, the preservative, but you also don't want it too cool. Um, you, you don't want it so hot that you kill the preservative, but you need it warm enough that it actually activates it as well. I have read about this nipper guard and you can add it in at slightly higher temperatures just over 40 as well and so I do actually like using this preservative I, it's also a paraben free um, preservative and there's no other sort of nasty in there um, there are a couple of preservatives I know that I am allergic to even though they are paraben free they have other ingredients in that um, I do react to so I find the nipper guard has been really good for me. It's also been good for some of my customers who do or who are sensitive to preservatives as well. So, And it's a pretty broad spectrum one that can be used in almost all of the recipes. Just make sure that your preservative is okay for whether you're using a water-based formula or a non-water-based one like this one. So this should now actually be cool enough. Yep, we're down to the bang on that 40 degrees. So I am going to add my preservative in and give that a really good mix. And then I'm going to put in these exfoliants that we've done. Now, when it comes to pouring, you've got a couple of different options. I like to pour mine quite cold. So if you pour, if you pour your mix above 40 degrees, so anywhere from about 38 up, you will find that most of your exfoliants will actually sink to the bottom of your bar because it just can't suspend in the mix. If you pour your mix lower than 37 degrees, you'll find that all the different exfoliants will actually suspend through the bar. So depending upon what you want, if you want a bar that is moisturizing on the top and scrubby on the bottom, then pour at a hotter heat or a higher heat. If you want it so that the scrub is um, dispersed all the way through the bar nice and evenly, pour at that lower temperature to make sure that the exfoliants do um, suspend in the mix. So I'm just going to mix that in, see what temperature we're at. We're at about 35 degrees Celsius, so it says it's about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to be right to start pouring this into the mould. Okay, so the mould that I'm using today is one of these soap round cavity moulds. Um, I got mine from Aussie Soap Supplies. I'm just going to move this forward a little bit pop that back. Now I sit it on top of a tray so I can nice and easily pick it up once it's done. I'm setting it on top of my scales because these are going to get packaged up and I like to make sure that they all do weigh the correct amount when we pour them in. So all it is now because we're down to the right temperature is pouring each of these soap cavities here. Now I know that some may be wondering why I have actually added preservative in here when I have no water in it. The general sort of rule is if you've got water in your formulation, then you need to have um, a preservative in it. Now, because this is actually going into the shower and will then also live in a water environment, that is why I have included 
the preservative just to stop any nasties growing because we have put some food elements in there as well with the almond oil or oh, sorry the almond meal so that just helps to protect it against any bacterias that may grow so in between each cavity I'm just tearing it off if you do forget to tear off in between each one just work in multiples so just multiply it by two to get your next one so tear. and this is smelling absolutely amazing now that one I have very much so over poured so I'm just going to grab my spoon Now whenever I do um, make any of my products, I always label them at about 10% more of what, or I actually, I pour them to be 10% more than what they actually are. So if I have a product that is labeled as 100 grams, I will always put in 110. And there's a couple of reasons for this. If you do have water-based products, you will find over time that water will continue to evaporate out of them. So by putting in that sort of leeway, you are, if someone does come along and start weighing your products, you know that you're going to be okay, that they will still be at that 100 mark. And also with products like this, this one's not so bad because there is no water content actually in it. But if you had something that did have water that needed that little bit of cure time, while it's sitting and curing, you actually will lose weight out of them. So I always go that little bit over um, to make sure that during that cure time they don't lose any product weight. So I'm going to keep pouring this. I'm going to have to swap hands, which will block the camera view so I'll pour these and come back once I've got them done okay so they're now all poured what I'm going to do is just go and give this a little bit of a knockdown on the floor then I'm going to pop this tray into the fridge for a couple of hours so that they set nice and hard then we'll come back and we'll have a look at wrapping them okay so these have been in the fridge for about four hours now and they have set up nice and hard and all I have to do is basically pop them straight out of the mold so I'm going to take all of these out and then I'm going to show you how I package my bars okay so these are out of the mold and they're looking great they're nice and firm and you can see that the exfoliating bits go from top to bottom on here now, the other thing I wanted out of my coffee scrubs was to be able to offer them in a environmentally friendly packaging option. So to do that, I've decided to wrap them up using coffee filters. But before I put them in the coffee filter, because we have a high fat content, I'm actually going to wrap them up in some grease proof paper first, just to stop all those oils from getting into the coffee filter and then making it look um, unpresentable after some time. So all I've done is I've chopped some um, grease proof paper down to size and I'm just going to gently fold this up and around just to enclose the bar inside so that it doesn't touch any of the coffee filter and then I'm going to use just a little bit of tape just to hold that down and then I have some basket coffee filters so I'm just going to take one of those and I'm going to place with the smooth side facing down into the center of my coffee filter and then I'm pretty much going to use that same sort of technique I'm going to fold a piece of the coffee filter paper over and then just gently work around in little bits pulling that coffee filter paper over the bar working around in a circle now you don't want to pull too hard otherwise you will end up ripping that coffee filter paper but if you go nice and slow and just work a little bit at a time, you do get it to pull up nice and tight and round. And then I have my labels. So on the back, just to hold it all down, I have how to use the coffee bar. Um, I have the ingredients. I have the date in which it was made. And I am also required to put down the location in which these were made. And then I'm going to pop my label on the front just saying what it is and just a few of the ingredients 
And there we have it, our coffee buff bars. So I hope you've enjoyed watching how I make our new coffee buff bars. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. And if you do have any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Um, if you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel? I do bring out a weekly video. And if you want to, hit the little bell sign and that will actually notify you when a new video comes up. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, have a great week.